Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Um, This is the month of August, so we start our new series this month. Like I promised, we will be talking about the husband. We're going to put a lot of emphasis on the husband and we're going to um, put a lot of emphasis on their role. Um, but before I can get into the role of the husband, we have to set some, uh, uh, we have to establish some type of foundation about the way you view your husband, okay? Um, before we get into this video, I want you to go ahead and hit that like button on YouTube. And if you would like, go ahead and hit that share button on YouTube because this series is definitely going to bless someone, okay? This is going to bless someone. Um, this this series um, is going to be for the whole month of August, just like communication was for the whole month of July. And um, one of the first assignments that was emailed out to my wives or my wives in training or women who potentially want to be wives and you just want to kind of navigate and see how this thing goes is my husband is he a blessing or is he a burden okay we're gonna get off into that okay husband is he a blessing or is he a burden okay so let's define blessing a blessing is normally considered favor some type of favor upon your life um something happens and you have a favorable outcome so the root word would be favor that would be blessing burden would be some type of heaviness um something that weighs on you, um, something that adds pressure to you. So when we think about a burden, we think about um, something that basically it, it's normally described in some type of negative weight, uh, a heavy weight, okay? So I asked this question, do you view your husband as a blessing or a burden? Because most times when people write in to me, about their spouse. Normally, I'm gonna say 80% of the time it's the wife that's writing in. 20% is the husband. When she speaks of her husband, she speaks of him in such a negative way too. It's almost like more of a burden to your life than a blessing to your life. So if you check your email, your homework assignment was to try to figure this thing out from a, um, in other words, we're going to think through it. When he came into your life, what made you feel like your husband was a blessing? What was going on in your life during that time? What were you doing? What were some of your struggles? What did the husband bring to the table? In other words, what was it that made you look at him as though he was just this great blessing to you? Okay. And then we have to say, at what point did the blessing start to feel more like a burden than a blessing? What went on? Okay. Then we ask ourselves, when was the last time this husband that was supposed to be a blessing, when was the last time he felt like a blessing to your life? If you hadn't gotten the email, you need to subscribe. If you are subscribed, you need to check your email and you don't have to send me the answers, but this is something that I just want you to think through, okay? When I decided that I was going to teach this lesson on the blessing and the burden, it brought me to this place where I thought about my very first call. My very first call was a 1998 eight for Taurus, right? I got this car pre-owned um, and I got it in 1999. So this car was fairly like a year old, right? 
car looks smack brand new. Looks smack brand new. Literally nothing wrong with the interior, um, not touch, anything. And I needed to get my driver's license. But the problem was nobody had a car to where I could get my license. So I ended up buying the car and I ended up using the car to get my driver's license. Quite naturally, I said, man, this car is a blessing. We ended up moving to a whole nother side of town that was about 20 minutes away from my high school. That means the bus wasn't gonna come pick me up. I would have to change schools. Guess what? My car came in handy because now I was able to commute back and forth to school. This car was a blessing, okay? I didn't have to call anybody to pick me up from work anymore. And during this time, I actually had three jobs in high school. I, I work at Exxon Plant from 12 in the evening to 4, Monday through Friday. I worked at KFC from 5 in the evening to 9. And then Saturday mornings, I did the concessions for the Little League game. This car allowed me to be able to get to all of these places. It was what I consider to be a blessing. Some months went on, and you wouldn't imagine that a car that was supposed to be brand new would all of a sudden start giving you problems. So, the little money that I was making started having to go into the maintenance of this car. And I was having issues with this car. This car started running hot. And then all of a sudden, from running hot, the heads cracked. And from the heads cracking, I needed a new motor. And from a new motor, um, the car just didn't sound like it did when I first got it. This new motor that they put in, it had a knock to it. And what happened was this car started to feel more like a burden to me than it was a blessing. And I started to feel like when the person sold me the car, I was deceived. And they sold me a lemon meaning that they had underlying issues that was not disclosed to me. So I started to feel like I made a bad decision with this car. A lot of people feel the exact same way when it comes down to picking a spouse. Meaning, suppose you met this person and during this time you were trying to go back and finish school and this person came along and it afforded you the opportunity to be able to do that because they was able to catch some of that slack. And you was like, this man is such a blessing because I'm allowed to go back to school to be able to finish my dream. Or you might've met this man and you were a single parent and he was able to come in and help you raise these children up and help you out at the football games and the basketball games. And he was a very involved step parent. And you're like, you know what? This man is a blessing, right? Well, suppose you met this man and during this time you were really down and out and maybe going through some type of depression or some type of loss. And this man came and actually put life back into your life. And you said, you know what? This man is a blessing. But throughout the time, things started to happen. And some of their flaws started to show up. And maybe it caused you not to trust them no more. Or maybe it caused you to view them differently. Or you didn't know that he had baby mama drama. Or you didn't know that you was going to have all of these issues with your mother-in-law. Or you didn't know that he was going to be a man that wasn't going to be faithful just to you. And he became a burden to you because your peace was disrupted. If you're going to stay in this relationship, what you have to do is either, you got two choices. Either you can, well, you got multiple choices, actually. Either you can leave it and just say, you know what, too much has happened. And I can't forgive and I can't move forward. Or you can stay in it and you can complain to anybody that will listen. Or you can make a decision on how you choose to see your husband. Especially husbands that have done the work, meaning that they're no longer doing the things that, that you um, 
that you might have felt like caused you not to trust them anymore. In other words, suppose they did step out because I use stepping out because it is the most common uh, factor that causes us as women to change the way we view our significant others. Normally it's cheating and it breaks down a barrier of trust that is almost like impossible to be able to gain that back. But what has to happen is you have to remember why you married this person. You have to start looking at them through the eyes that you was looking at them through when you first met them, when you viewed them as your blessing. See, we don't want to, I, I was reading something and that's why I wanted to pull this up because I said, this, this is good. Sometimes we have this way of, when I got that car, I wanted, I, I didn't want nobody to eat in it. I wanted to keep it full of gas. In other words, I wanted to take care of it because it was brand new and I treated it like it was brand new. But then sometimes what happens is we have this sense of normalcy to whereas we get used to it, right? And all of a sudden, at first you couldn't eat in the car, but now you can eat some fries. First you couldn't drink in the car, now you can drink. Oh, I don't want nobody smoking here. Now they can roll a window down and smoke. In other words, normalcy brings on this sense of devaluing what we have. In other words, we start doing something called taking it for granted, okay? Do not take your spouse for granted. It is easy to take your spots for granted, meaning that we get used to everything that they're doing for us. You have to constantly remind your spouse of your underlying love for him or her. Appreciate what your spouse does for you and the family. Thank God for the spouse that you've been blessed with. You don't ever want to take your spouse for granted or love upon them only when there's a crisis or there's fear of losing them. We have to be intentional. So the reason I wanted to do this video today is because I want you to honestly take a look at your spouse because we're going to get into this whole thing about the husband, but take a look at your spouse. And I want you to be honest with yourself and say, have I been treating my spouse like they are a blessing to me or have I been treating them like they are a burden to me? If my spouse did something to wrong me and I said that I forgave them, at what point am I going to move forward? It's no different than a person committing a crime and the judge tell them that they sentenced to five years and they go in there and they do their five years and all of a sudden, every day they wake up, people want them to do their five years over and over and over and over again and they've paid their debt to society. At what point, from whatever it is that your spouse did you that wronged you, at what point do you allow them to grow? At what point do you allow them to not have that hoovering over their head? Because I, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times we beat people up for their bad choices. Because I don't really like to use mistakes. It's just bad choices. But they beat themselves up for the bad choices too. Because they have to a lot of times look at the people who they hurt on a daily basis. And it's a constant reminder that they made a bad choice. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is if you want longevity in your marriage, if you want your marriage to grow and you want to be able to be healthy and love upon each other and these people are not showing any signs of the bad behavior, you got to learn to let some stuff go. I stress they're not showing any signs of the bad behavior because I just had this lady and she's in my wife group and y'all, I'm never the type of person, I'm not going to ever tell you to leave your spouse, okay? But I'm going to tell you to be realistic about your reality. Y'all, this woman, she had came to the store and she talked to me, fine. She caught me here. Then... She um she got in the wife group and everything that she posted was just all of this horrible stuff that her husband was doing to her present day. Like literally present day, the things that he was telling her present day, right? Not anything in the past, anything. like this is what's currently going on. And this man was literally doing everything to this woman 
other than walking out the door and saying, I don't want you. And I'm talking about, I could really be honest and say, B, I don't want you no more. He was literally doing everything but that. And she was trying to figure out what I got to do, what I got to do, what prayer I got to pray, what this, this, that, the other. And let me just tell you this here, wives. You can pray all the prayers you want to pray. You could go and lay it all out at the altar. And I'm not saying that our God can't restore because he can. But let me just say this here. Our God is not a force for God, meaning that if your husband has closed his heart up, if your husband has literally removed the will to try, if your husband does not want it anymore, God will not override his will. I'm going to say that again. If your husband does not want to be a husband to you and he no longer wants to act like a husband, God will not override his will. So when I got up and I said marriages will be restored in 2021, I was talking about the people who wanted it, the couples both who wanted to put in the work and who both wanted restoration. You can want it all you want, but if the other person don't want it, baby, all you doing it's just spinning your wheels. At some point, you have to say, Lord, deliver me from me. Lord, restore me. Lord, strengthen me. Help me. In other words, you got to start building and praying for yourself about this situation to help him strengthen you for however this thing go. Whether you, whether, you know, you got to prepare yourself to live the next chapter by yourself, whether you got to ask for strength to be able to endure up until your husband decides to change his mind, whatever it is, because we can't make that decision for you. But at some point, you got to start looking at things for what they are. And it really, it really broke my heart to see this woman wanting something so bad and to see this woman being rejected over and over again, even publicly, just rejected. Because sometimes men stay in situations because it is cheaper to keep her. Sometimes men do stay in situations because they want to be in the same household with their children. Sometimes men stay in situations because they're comfortable, but it ain't because they want to be there. And you have to be wise enough to know the difference, okay? So, when you're doing this ex exercise, excuse me, I want you to look at your husband. Is your husband a blessing to you? Meaning he's bringing favor on your life. You waking up every day, literally loving upon this person because every day ain't going to be a day to where it's all mushy, mushy. And that's, that's romantic type of love. Meaning that every day y'all understand the duty that y'all have to one another. You understand the importance of being there for one another. Or is your husband a burden to you to where you walking around every day feeling like this is just not worth it? This person is absolutely adding nothing to me, our family, this situation, and all they're doing is taking from this situation. Cause you ever just because you married, you ain't God ain't guaranteed nobody no good husband. And that's just the truth. A lot of times people be on this, well, I deserve, I deserve, baby. If we all got what we felt like we deserve, we all have it going on. But that's just not the way life works. Okay? So Again, I'm going to continue to pray for you. You all continue to pray for me. This is the very first video uh, of the series called The Husband. We're going to break down the role and the duties of a husband. And I also want to say this. Every marriage is not the same. Uh, every husband is not going to be the same. Every husband is going to have strengths and weaknesses. However, the foundation is the same. The fundamentals are the same. Okay? All right. You all be blessed. You all enjoy your day. Like, share, and subscribe.